Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and in this DCS F16C Viper video, we'll be taking a look at the basic operation of the air-to-air -air radar. This includes the range while search mode, the situation awareness mode, and single track target mode. We'll also be taking a look at the AIM-120 AMRAAM air-to-air -air missile. Let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at the air-to-air -air radar and the uh, AMRAAM AIM-120 air-to-air missile. Uh, first, I'm going to place aircraft into uh, pitch hold so to maintain its current altitude, and I'll place the master mode into air-to-air. -air. And when I did that here on the SMS page, we see that we have six uh, AIM-120B active-guided radar missiles. Uh, going to the left side, we see that we have the SCR page up, or fire control radar, and a SOI indicated by the white box around the perimeter. At the very top, we have CRM, or Combined Radar Modes, which allows us to select from different search modes to the radar. But we can press the USB, we can actually also select different Air Combat Maneuvering Modes, or ACM. We'll keep it at CRM for now. Now, one of the search mo modes is called RWS, or Range While Search, and that's in a format of top to bottom uh, being in range, and side to side being in azimuth. Uh, next to that, we have our Expand Mode option, and then an override, which basically puts in a standby, and then control functions. Now coming to the very left side, we have the ability to adjust the display range of the SCR. Right now it's at 40 miles, but we can OS OSB up to 160 or OSB down all the way to 5. We'll go to 80 for now. Uh, below that we have our azimuth setting, or the left and right uh, sweep of the radar. Right now it's an azimuth of 60 degrees. We can change that to a 30 degree or even a 10 degree. I'm going to keep it at 60 for now. So at 60, it's basically going 30 to the right and then 30 to the left. And we also see the uh, uh, T mark here indicating the uh, azimuth sweep of that uh, radar within a scale. And finally below that, we have our bar setting of four bars, one bar and two bar. And for uh, each bar, it allows you more elevation within a raster scan uh, pattern. Uh, obviously, the more rasters you have, it's going to be a slower update, but the more volume you're going to be searching. Now, one thing you do is using the uh, TDC, the um, two bars here, by moving to the very top, you can increase the display range, or move it to the very bottom, you can decrease it. Also, you can move it to the side to adjust the azimuth between 60 and 30. Now, speaking of the uh, cursor, uh, above and below the right side, we have two numbers. The top number is the top elevation being searched, in the cone of the radar, and the bottom number is the lower elevation within the cone of the radar. Because it's a cone, the numbers are going to be closer together the closer the uh, cursor is to you, and wider as the uh, code expands out. Uh, we also have a wedding cake, which indicates the uh, steer point, and we have a blue uh, horizon line. Now, in order to designate a target, all we're going to do is we're going to place the cursor over one of the contacts, one of these squares, and we'll go up on the TMS switch or TMS switch on the control stick. And we did that, we've entered a situational awareness mode or SAM mode. We have some additional data now. Uh, we have its uh, aspect angle, its uh, magnetic heading, its speed, and its closure rate now. And also we have its altitude and a stem indicating its travel direction. So we're getting a lot more information about this contact now, but it's also searching the immediate area around it, indicated by these two blue lines. You can see there's another contact within that general area. Now if we go Teamus forward one more time, we've entered single track target mode, or STT, where the radar is solely focusing on that one target, and we're getting a lot more updates on it. So let's come back out to the HUD now. And we can see a target de designation box of the line of sight to that target we have locked up in STT. The larger circle here is your allowable steering error circle, and the smaller one to the left is our steering queue. And in order to get a good valid shot, we want to make sure the steering queue is inside the ASC if possible. On the right side, we have our DLZ or dynamic launch zone, and we have our display range here at the uh, top, which is 80, and our current uh, closure, 970 which is also the range of the target. Uh, the top of the staple here is our R-Max 1 range. Below that is our no escape range. The little circle here is the range at which the missile will go active. And at the very bottom, it's our minimum engagement range. 
And below all that, we have either an A, which is the time for the missile to go active, or a T for the time to intercept. Then also around the perimeter of the ASC, we have a small carrot that indicates the aspect direction of that target flying. So right now we can see it's uh, flying almost right towards us, a little bit of uh, right to left. And based on the DLC, we can see it just past uh, our max range. And we can also see now that the ASC is starting to expand because it's a little getting a bit closer. And we have a pretty high aspect uh, engagement here. Also in the HUD, we see that we have six medium range missiles ready to go. And Fox 3. And the dime note with the stems is um, an indicative of an AIM-120, whereas an AIM-9 will have a different symbol we'll see in, in a later video. Splash. So that's a little look at the air-to-air -air radar and the AIM-120. I very much hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.